To conclude the part on the forward-backward method, we want to show a convergence rate of the, of the function values. Okay, and to do that, I want to remind you about the, um, the telescoping inequality we have shown. Um, but here we don't take the we don't take x to be necessarily a minimizer right now because we want to use the the gap of bit between the function values at x n plus one and some arbitrary function values. So if you if you put in x bar there, you get the, the optimal function value. For our analysis, um, we had another term here. Um, which would actually decrease this thing here. So you go, if you were to, to use this term, you would not get a convergence rate for the difference of function values, which you're usually more interested in, but instead you get function values, function value difference um, minus something, minus the difference of the, of the gradients squared with some factor. So usually I'm more interested in the, in the function value. Okay. So, um, um, what we do here is, well, um, we still use our telescoping inequality as, as, we, as, we, uh, as we did in the, in the, in the other parts. So, um, I started the last video with take n greater or equal than 1, same as, same here, and sum the inequality for n from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, what do we get? Um, well, again, these terms cancel out. So you only have the very first term and the very last term. Mm, since the last term is capital N minus 1, you get capital uh, Y capital N here. Okay. Greater or equal than. And now, yeah, this term, this norm squared is certainly non-negative, so it's greater or equal than 0. So, yeah, we don't have to write it explicitly. Um, if, we, if we leave it out, then we are still certainly greater or equal than what remains. Same holds here for the other norm, norm uh, the only thing which we have to um, which uh, which we have to uh, be careful about is that we did not use the 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 negative term in the uh, for the function values so we only have one over l here okay so keep this in mind um, so keep this in mind i say and i better write it down so that we keep it in mind um, if gamma is less or equal than 1 over L, then uh, the, this term here will be certainly non-negative. That's what we need. We want to, we're going to just get rid of it anyway, but we can only do that if, if the whole thing is non-negative. Okay, what remains is the interesting part, namely the function values. We sum this up, sum n equals 0 to capital N minus 1, and we have 2 gamma f of x n plus 1 plus g x n plus 1 minus f of x minus g of x. And this is for all um, x in h and y equal x minus gamma gradient of f at x. Okay. And if gamma is less or equal than 1 over L. Okay. So, and again, as in the last video, we can just ignore this term here because that's, that has the right sign as well. So we get this. Okay. This looks very nice. So we have a sum of function values which is less or equal than um, uh, the norm of y0 minus y. Okay, 
So now we also remember the property, the property that the function values are falling. So we have a descent uh, method, which means that uh, the function value f of x0 plus g of x0 is greater or equal than f of x1 plus g of x1, which is in turn greater or equal than um, f of x2 plus g of x2, and so on. And the largest function value we have, or the, the, the largest index we have, sorry, the largest index means the smallest function value, is f of x capital N plus g of x capital N. Okay, so um, let's now continue uh, the thought. So we have this is greater or equal than, so um, uh, we have the descent property Okay, let's note this, no, okay, let's note that. Greater or equal than sum n from 0 to capital N minus 1 to gamma. And whatever we have here uh, is certainly greater or equal than um, the, the function value with the biggest index. So f of x n plus 1 with a, n between 0 and capital N minus 1 is greater or equal than um, f of x capital N plus g of x capital N. Okay, so you can write this minus f of x minus g of x. Okay, nice. So we see that this sum here does no longer depend on n, on, on the small n. So this is actually equal to, well, we have um, capital N um, summons here, which are all equal. So we have 2 gamma capital N f of x capital N plus g of x capital N minus f of x minus g of x. And notice that still holds for all x in h. So we actually don't need to assume the existence of a minimizer. So this, this property here is independent. So we can actually apply the forward backward method to like the exponential function, which does not have um, a minimizer if we, of, of course, decompose it like in a, in a nice way. And we still get um, our, this property here. So this means that for all, whatever you, whatever x you, you set in here, you can, of course, um, get x down to, to any, uh, to, to, so that f, so that the f of x plus g of x will be um, um, arbitrarily close to the, to the infimum. But um, if you don't have the existence of a minimizer, then you, the arbitrary close is the, the best you can get. So you can, cannot, um, you cannot not go to the infimum directly. But still the property holds if, if this is arbitrary close to an infimum. Okay? And the property says, well, this constant here is greater or equal than 2 gamma capital N of, of this gap here. So this means uh, for all um, Um, for all x in h, and now we can substitute this again if you want, um, and capital N greater or equal than 1, we have f of xn plus g of xn. Um, yeah, okay minus f of x minus g of x less or equal than 1 over 2 gamma capital N. Now we have norm of, now just write x0 minus x minus gamma gradient of f at x0 minus gradient f at x. Okay. Okay. 
So if so, actually, remember this holds for all x. If we assume the existence of a minimizer, then we have that this gap between the f at x n and the optimal value closes with O of 1 over capital N. So, so if a minimizer exists, then, yeah, and, and I should also say the minimizer exists, x bar of uh, f plus g um, implicitly here, then we have that This is O of, so capital O of 1 over n. And the constant, of course, uh, depends on the, on the x. Therefore, I want to just fix this x to some uh, minimizer here. Um, it's a bit more tricky for, um, like for, the, for the exponential case. I don't want to go into like, the notational inconveniences here. OK, right. Then let's just summarize. So, just a sum summary. Um, and these assumptions here I take for granted. So, um, if a minimizer x bar of x f plus g exists, then um, uh, then we know if a zero less than gamma less than two over L, then we know then that xn um, uh, generated by the forward backward method. converges to a minimizer of f plus g. And if 0 less than gamma less or equal than 1 over L, then, um, yeah, then we have f of x n plus g of x n minus f of x bar minus g of x bar equals o of 1 over n. And in general, this is faster than what you can achieve with the subgradient method. And therefore, um, if, you, if speed is important to you and if you have access to this decomposition of your objective function into a convex differentiable part and the proper convex lower semi-continuous part, which you know the proximal points of, this is important, then you can use the forward-backward method instead of the subgradient method, and you usually get um, stronger, uh, uh, faster convergence, and at least you get a faster convergence guarantee. So remember you had, for the subgradient method, you had a like a convergence rate of O of, or we have shown a convergence rate of O of 1 over uh, the logarithm, yeah, 1 over the logarithm of n. Um, you can improve this uh, with some more sophisticated techniques to 1 over the square root of n, if you, if you like. Um, but here uh, we have actually uh, shown the better rate of 1 over n, okay? And uh, you should put this in contrast to what we sh what we um, show next. This is basically under the same uh, assumptions um, with some more sophisticated algorithm, which also uses only gradient of f and proximal points of g. You can actually further improve this convergence rate to one over n squared, and this will be 
the content of the, of the next series of videos on the accelerated forward-backward method.